Dharmashanti Prima Satyam Ahimsa Dharmashanti Prima Satyam Ahimsa Dharmashanti Prima Satyam Ahimsa Thank you so much for being here for our sidetrack episode three, delving into social media. And we can't wait for everyone here to share their expertise and experience and all of these topics we have prepared for you. For the first question that we have for you today, how can we as teachers, parents, and guardians of our SSC children ensure our child's safety when they're online, potentially interacting with strangers? The goal is to make sure that our children are safe online and an acronym that I made up is E-Make. So E means engage, which means to have age appropriate conversations on topics such as strangers invading your personal online space, cyber bullying, inappropriate content, uh, posting content that could be misused or misrepresented. So that's E. Uh, M stands for model the behavior by being a role model yourself, limit your time, applications, and content. A is to accentuate the positive. Social media lets you collaborate, find your voice, share your passion, have sessions like what we're having today. So all of that is the positive side of technology and social media. And K stands for knowing that technology, how to use it, uh, both positively as well as to set up the controls such as parent controls to monitor the applications and games that your children might be using. And finally, don't hesitate to use E, which stands for enforce the boundaries, especially the screen time, content, and playing games. And last but not the least, remember that you're not alone. There are lots of support groups, educational institutions, and also websites from government institutions such as the US government and the Australian government have excellent sites, and we can share that in the links afterwards. There's definitely a plethora of resources available to us, but we're so glad that we have all of you, especially to point out which resources to look for. I especially love that acronym. Does anybody have suggestions about how to keep our children safe, especially with so many of our SSC 1 and 2 kids, but really all ages, being so attached to YouTube in particular? So I can take that one also. Uh, there's a lot of valuable content on YouTube, such as how-to videos and educational videos. And as I mentioned, it can be an outlet. I know of a few introverted children who have found their passion, for example, on piano and sharing it positively on YouTube. But we also need to be careful. For example, YouTube wants to maximize the time that you spend on the site so they can show you more ads. So they have the autoplay feature turned on so it automatically starts playing the next video clip even though it may not be relevant or even appropriate. So parents need to keep an eye on that on the watch history or limit to YouTube kids in the early stages. And more than YouTube, there are websites on the dark web that promise free movies, but clicking on them, you may download something accidentally or watch something that you shouldn't be watching. I know that we're talking about our SSC children here, but I've definitely gone down some rabbit holes myself with that autoplay feature. I think it's also good to keep in mind some of the some of the abilities that come with us when we visit YouTube as parents, and those can be shared accounts where we can give separate ones to our children so that that watch history is a little bit more personalized to them and can be age appropriate content if something pops up. And it's still good to have parental controls and there's even a YouTube kids in order to make this journey a little safer for them as they might be watching videos on their own. That's an excellent point, Anisha. I think having the separate account so you can keep track of personal watch history is a really good point. And I think that some of that knowledge for me just comes from growing up with the social media era becoming and booming as it is now while I myself was growing up. And I saw this with Instagram, with my friends getting it in middle school and Snapchat and Twitter, everything's gotten so much more popular as I myself was grow growing up. But a lot, of, a lot of the teacher and parents here most likely did not grow up in this era. And how do you think that might affect how they view social media versus the younger generation's relationship with it? Um, I can take that. Um, so I think that 
you know, as parents, first of all, it's important that we we model the right things for the kids because when we are consuming, I mean, it goes back to even actually your previous point on YouTube, um, especially when you are thinking about shared accounts, which is a great idea. It's important that as parents, we are aware of what we are watching and how we are consuming. And I'm going back to the YouTube point, I'll also get to the overall um, social media part. Um, because, you know, not only is are all these social media platforms learning algorithms and they're kind of spewing out, you know, exactly what you watch, what you like. So you have to watch, you yeah. know, as Swami says, watch, you have to really watch what you are watching so that, you know, it's, it is impacting your kids uh, yeah. that way. So especially if you have younger children and you have shared accounts, be aware of that. Um, I think it's also important that, you know, it's important how we use social media as adults, because we are modeling that for, uh, for the kids too. And for, you know, even, and it, and it goes back to what you said is as parents, we didn't grow up using social media and kids obviously, you know, they're born with it pretty much. They're born with, you know, little kids know how exactly how to use the iPad, et cetera. So, so knowing that you are actually providing when you're posting something, even as parents, you're providing value. You're not just posting it because you want to show off about your kids or you want to talk about your vacations. I mean, that's good, but you can share it with a smaller group of family members or something. You don't have to tell the whole world what you're doing. Because I think that that way, the kids also know that you know, you're, you're only doing it to if, if it is of value to others. So I think that's one way of kind of keeping a watch on ourselves so that we are doing the right thing for the kids too. Well, I think that parents many times are not <clears throat> as aware as they could be of the dangers and pitfalls that um, they as adults and children can encounter on the web. Um, because at any other time, you actually see threats in person. This is different because it is not in the form of somebody walking and talking in front of you. It's through a uh, media platform or the internet. So I think it's a little bit more detailed attention that needs to be drawn to this issue. It is a little bit different when those dangers aren't tangible and they're hiding behind a screen. Yeah, I would add to those points also that, you know, as parents, uh, we may be just afraid of something when we don't understand it. And, you know, we hear about all of these dangers. And so that might even turn us away from not understanding. But that's a mistake, I think, because, you know, it's important to first understand social media, how to use it, how it can be used beneficially. And so then you get to know both the positives as well as the harm that it can do and guide uh, your children better. Most definitely. And, and the kids think, oh, well, I know all about social media and the internet, but my parents don't know. So um, why should I listen to them? <laughs> I will fully admit and take responsibility for my not so mature actions as a middle schooler and high schooler, knowing that I knew more than my parents about social media. And that at that time, it was a fact. But with parents now being able to overcome that barrier of understanding both the consequences and really what it's like to be on social media, they open themselves up to be a resource for their children. Mm -hmm. So how can parents and teachers encourage open discussion with their children about social media? Well, let's go back to the primary premise first of what SSE is about. As Swami says, with SSE, the number one objective is the creation of an atmosphere where holy and sacred thoughts can grow and develop. Because the truth of one's own divinity is within, not outside. And everything you receive in middle school and high school is telling you your happiness is outside of you. Your happy, happiness is with your peers and recognition, um, competition, 
But Swami's message in SSE is everything is within. So we have to identify what is the Dharma of the internet and social media and uh, help young people to see that it's not a toy. How many times had to think back during your life as a child, how many times did your parents give you an electronic device just to keep you busy? <laughs> give you something to do when they needed for you to be quiet right so it creates mixed messages like you say it's so important to start young but group three and group four if we could have um group association group association it's not just a parent who's saying this but there is a group of parents and a significant other adults in their life who are concerned about the safety issues, having family meetings about safety guidelines for the home, letting the child know that I, as a parent, we also are approached with threats on the internet and sharing that with your child or your teen so that they know that it's not something that I'm asking you to do, but it is a we issue. We do this together. Having uh, parents from different families coming together with the children and uh, working out personalized guidelines. What are guidelines? Having a uh, set up procedure, just like if there is a fire in the house, or an emergency tornado, everybody has a place where they meet up. Have a procedure set up with your teen on what to do if they find themselves in a dangerous situation and then role play how to answer. So that's just some ideas. I love your point of having to come together as a community around these children, not just as one parent or one teacher saying like, oh, be careful with technology, really encompassing that whole idea of everyone. And I myself am not a parent, but I am a teacher of an SSC3 class. And I really love seeing this rise of knowledge in the kids when we're talking about just our daily lessons about like unity and thought, word and deed and procrastination, time waste, and technology always comes into the conversation. And I think by normalizing it in that way, when even just talking about SSC values, we start to normalize the conversation and the back and forth before things go wrong. And I think that establishing that is so important so that they're not scared to be a resource, to use us as a resource when something does go wrong. And give them practice. And give have them practice. practice. And have family meetings, check in once a week, at least. What's going on? What's your experience? This is what happened to me. I got these kind of emails. I got these kind of telephone calls. I got these kind of text messages. It cannot be about the individual or you lose the trust because it's about building trust. It has to be about safety for the family and the teen is a member of the family. And you have aunties and uncles who can help provide that safety ladder to help protect everyone. Just as we sort of teach ourselves and our children, hey, look both ways before you cross the road, technology safety has to be normalized in that way where we're building a boat for them so that when they're older, when they're independent, they'll be able to sail away into this huge world of technology, but be able to manage it themselves. I think is how I view myself as a teacher when I give themselves give these kids all these values. I want them to be able to take it away as they're growing older and have it instilled from them, as you said, Frida Auntie, from all of this good practice. But something you mentioned earlier about how easy it is to captivate attention with technology is something that we see a lot with social media. And I was wondering exactly how does the social media algorithms work to draw us in and capture our attention so well? And how can we sort of take back our control of our own time and attention? I could take that. Um, you're absolutely right. I think, um, and I think Brother Padmanan mentioned this before too, that you know, there 
all the social media platforms and companies, they have an agenda, right? It is they're they're here obviously they may have may have started with the intention of connecting people but you know as everyone's grown and they have become behemoths in their own right they all you know are in it for their own good and their own purpose they want to make money there's ads there's all these things um so they've all developed uh you know certain algorithms uh, especially you know platforms like facebook almost everyone instagram snapchat youtube all of them because the idea is that they want to track what you're what you're liking what you're commenting on what you're sharing and that and that's because they want to be able to their goal is that you do not leave their channel <laughs> you basically are quote unquote sucked in you're looking at things you're liking things and as you like things they serve up more things that you like so there's certain i mean it goes back to our I keep I know I keep going back to the YouTube example but that's really what it is you you watch certain things that are they serve up more on your playlist so that you can keep watching it it's it's that's the that seems to be the culture now even with like things like Netflix right you're like you keep going you keep going you get addicted to and that's they like that because they want to make sure that you are uh, never leaving their site so you know they track our interests they track where we are especially if we leave our privacy settings open which i'm you know and we could probably do a whole discussion on how to do your how to set up your privacy settings etc but it is important that we are all aware i mean not only as parents which starts with us but also let our kids know you know how do you you know how do you ensure that you're actually limiting your behavior you're limiting your watch um again how much time you're spending on on watching some of these channels how do you set up your privacy settings i think it's important for parents to know that first and then make sure that you're um sharing that with your kids there could be even things like private accounts you know you're not allowing the whole world to follow you if you don't want them following you but you you can actually set up ways in which you can um um control if you're giving permission to someone else to follow you um and the same thing kind of applies to even limiting our own screen time because there are so many ways we have apps now and we have i think it's built into our um phones especially if you have iPhones or you can actually track how much time you're spending as long as we have electricity we will have social media <laughs> and the internet as long as there's power in the world So as parents and teachers we have to be aware that there is a true need and not just talk about it how many times we go to workshops or conferences and we hear things and we put it to papers and handouts in our um book bag and we go home and nothing happens so we have to do something if we're really concerned about it and it's not just saying to your teen uh what are you doing <laughs> what are you looking at it, again if you use the power of group identification coming together as a group using our cybersecurity experts using technology of what we're doing right now to bring people together for a conference for a workshop and the parents have to be involved in this too so that it is a family issue and then we'll make swami the head of the family and use his guidelines so that we use the internet and its services to help take us towards the goal which is realizing the beauty of the divinity within sairam Sairam and of course when all of the just this discussion is happening i think that part of what you're saying about having that action that takeaway plan that we need is something that we need to work on first as adults before we try and make our children do it so we will have an activity at the end of our workshop today so stick around for that and don't go away before we get to do that together but when we think about swami's words and how it relates to social media I think that the something that I always tell my SSC kids and I have in other workshops is the three T's, which is think carefully, type appropriately, and talk lovingly. I think that it's the shortest checklist that you can go to when you're saying is is this in alignment 
with what SWAMI has taught me, my SSC teachers have taught me, with my guidelines from school. And it really encompasses that type appropriately doesn't just mean like, oh, I can't, I can't use bad language. It also means be appropriate to yourself in relation to keeping yourself safe in this online presence. And a big thank you to all of our panelists today, because I think that I learned a lot just from our experience together today. And I really hope that our audience will have some really great takeaways as well. Sairam. Thank you.